Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we have four games on a Thursday night slate here for you guys. A lot to talk about in the trade world. We also will have a trade deadline uh, sort of wrap up video for you guys through the lens of some futures markets and how this will impact what's going on in the NBA in this in this betting world specifically. Uh, but in this one, we're going to be taking a look at some player props. One guy might be affected by uh, some of the exits that we've got talking about here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into all that. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Also got a couple game videos up for you today. And if you head to thelines.com, you can check out all of our great written content up there and use that odds finder tool to make sure you're getting the best juice back on all these NBA play props and bets you're making this season. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into our first prop, a fan fa- or show favorite, I should say, Drew Holiday. Yeah, and he hasn't really flashed a ton of usage this season, uh, except for that three-game or five-game stretch where Giannis was out. He was on fire, and then he's kind of uh, you know slowed down with the usage again, but still... 20 points per game, eight assists per game on the road is last 10 here. 27% usage rate for Drew. So that's 28 points and assists. And we're looking at 26 and a half as a prop for points and assists. Against the Lakers team that gives up the most points per game to point guards. Eighth most assists to point guards. Second most threes. He's averaging 20 and eight against them. Again, in his last five. And playing heavy minutes. Um, I do expect this game to be kind of close and, and Josh thinks, you know, the Bucks are going to blow them out. I'm not as sure. I think the Lakers are going to be a little bit galvanized by the absence of Russell Westbrook. But in any case, Holiday should be doing, uh, handling more facilitation here, uh, with no Joe Ingles and, and Chris Middleton still ways back away from being fully back. You know, his last nine with no Ingles Holiday is averaging 24 points per game, 8.2 assists. Um, that includes, you know, 35 and 11 against Indy and 24 and 11 against Miami granted no Giannis in that game either but yeah we're talking about a Lakers team that that gives up a lot of production to point guards and and Holiday I I think it's kind of a game where he slips through the cracks really while the Titans are are battling their Giannis and AD and stuff and it's just like oh look at that Drew Holiday coming in clutch so that's my take for that one no, I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> Have some confidence. I believe in you in this one too. Um, we, yeah, definitely want Drew to, to continue to get the uh, the assist there. But I, I do think he'll continue to sort of play second scorer for right now, especially while uh, while Chris Middleton. He's still on somewhat of a minutes restriction, still only averaging about 15 a game over his last seven. So I think there's a good reason to think the usage for for Drew Boo will still be pretty high for us. So. Um, going to go to an under in our second one here, Nate, and that is Nikola Vucevic, um, minus 120 on DK for him to get less than 21 points tonight. Um, you could throw in the rebounds as well, 32 and a half points and rebounds. If you go under that, it's actually minus 106 on FanDuel. I think I would throw that in there for the extra, like less than 13 rebounds as well. Um, but you know, they're playing the Nets tonight, uh, a Nets team that is going to look way different without Kevin Durant, uh, out there as well. Although Cam Thomas seems unstoppable, um, in his last seven versus Brooklyn. And by the way, Nick Claxton also looking like a complete madman on defense, playing really well over his last five, uh, with individual defensive rating of like 108. Um, but Vooch, uh, in his last seven versus the Nets overall, 12, uh, points per game, 10.6 boards there on 36% from the field and just a 97 individual offensive rating he is hot over his last three so you have to have a little bit of uh chutzpah as we say to take an under on him right now but 24 a game and 13 boards two of those were at home not on the road like this one and if you look at those three we're talking about the spurs without Jakob purtle uh the inside eater uh blazers without nurk and then memphis when uh the bulls played without uh damar and that's why you know there was a, a much bigger usage for vooch in that one his road splits so much better uh you know at home so far than on the road but he still gets less than 20 a game and about 13 boards there um, and yeah, the Nets in general uh, this year, they're they're much better rebounding team at home than they were. They're not great. It's a little bit scary to, to think about it because they're a little bit weak down low. Um, but like we were saying, you know, Vooch also, I don't know that you can depend on him to be the one to get those points down low. Uh, and I, I believe a little bit more in Nick Claxton, what he's been doing uh, in that center role since, you know, basically since Kyrie just decided he was not he was done with this team. Yeah, I'm a little interested in the Nets to win this game, too. I mean, I feel like there's still a shoot to drop. I feel like the Bulls are going to trade somebody before 3 p.m. here. Uh, so we'll see. You know, maybe Vooch will be playing without Levine or DeRozan, and, the, and his usage will spike 
because of that. But I mean, the Nets have clearly a great game plan in place to deal with him. 12 points per game in seven meetings, uh, seven of his eight since he joined Chicago. And Jock Vaughn was the guy crafting up those game plans. And now he's the head guy. So <clears throat> I think they'll they'll keep him under 20 points regardless. And we, we should see a pretty uh, competitive game from the new look Nets. This is actually my favorite bet here. It's just not a big enough name, I guess, to lead with. But Aaron Gordon, seven rebounds at plus 115. Uh, you know, in a matchup with his former team, love that former team theory, averaging just over seven boards and 19 points per game in four against Orlando since he was traded uh, a couple years ago. And that includes a really efficient 24.7 rebound game just last month against them. But the real reason I like it, I mean, is, is I think Jamal Murray's going to sit uh, in his last three without Murray. His usage has gone up 6%, 26.5%. Minutes have gone up uh, to 33 and a half from 29 and a half. And, you know, so you want to tack on points and rebounds, 24 and a half, sure. But I think the rebounds are just too low. He's averaging nearly nine boards per game on the road since we turned to January here versus just six at home. And that's because the Nuggets are worse offensively on the road. Uh, they're playing choppier games. And, and Orlando is exactly the type of team that's going to play choppy. They're 25th in offensive rating at home. They're, they're a very poor offensive team, uh, and, and, don't, and I don't think they're going to do great in this matchup necessarily. So enough board opportunities here for Gordon. And when Murray's out, he's often you know the, one of the prime options for Jokic to just find him cutting and, and get him going. Totally, yeah. Once, once Murray's out, kind of turn to Gordon and maybe some Bruce Brown stuff for those, those cutters off of Jokic, like you're saying. But, but yeah, Gordon, Gordon, a pretty good play here. Six and a half rebounds, I mean – a plus 115 that's what it's about like i would love it if it was at five and a half but those odds at six and a half i think you got to feel pretty good about the boards in that sense um not sure what the points will be like tonight for either of these teams as we expect it to be kind of ugly um but that just enhances the, uh, the opportunity for rebounds as well so with some plus odds there i think that's uh that's my favorite bet for it with you as well um we were looking for an under we were looking for something in this suns and hawks game um because this could go one of two ways right like like CP3 and DeAndre Ayton could come out and, oh, by the way, Devin Booker's not playing. That's a huge uh, sort of in impact here, right? That's going to have a big effect on what we're talking about here. But but are they going to fold? Are they going to be angry? Uh, or, you know, are they going to come out and be like, uh, not necessarily fold, but are they going to come out and sort of be like, yo, we're ready to go and we're pumped? Or are they going to come out and sort of just be like, I can't wait till these guys get here and be a little bit I, I, distracted? You know, I'm not totally sure either way. The prop for CP3 is very high. And I think that it's in part due. Obviously, Booker is not in. He's got a few more points per game when Book's out this season. Um, but, you know, I think it's also high because I think they do think the Suns are sort of elated and, you know, walking on on sunshine. I didn't mean to do that. Um, but in his last 10, you know, 17 and a half points is way too high for CP3. So I'm going under on that minus 106 on FanDuel for it. If you want to throw the the, the points and reba the rebounds and assists in there as well, the super high 30 and a half points, rebounds and assists combined minus 104 on FanDuel would like under that as well, please. Um, in his last 10, we're talking about 14 points a game. He only went over that points prop three different times there. Um, and in his last four total, nine points a game, seven assists per game in, in 32 minutes. Um, so, you know, just not nearly as much scoring for him. Atlanta is only allowing is allowing less than eight assists uh, to point guards over their last 15 games, playing a little bit better defense and definitely DeJounte stamp, stepping it up in that sense. Um, and in his five, last five versus Atlanta, specifically CP3, just 11 points per game and seven assists in that time frame as well. Um, and even, like I said, with Booker in or with Booker out, he's got 15 a game, two more points than he's averaging this season when Booker's not playing or when Booker is playing, I should say. Um, but 15 a game does still is not even close enough to get you, you know, to that to that 18 points that he needs tonight. Um, so I, I just don't see it happening for him uh, as I haven't been able to see it for a while now. Yeah, because I mean, Paul's just not a scorer at this point in his career. He's not that's not his primary look. So if the Suns are competitive in this game and do get galvanized by the the eventual arrival of Durant. I don't think it's going to be because CP3 is, you know, putting up 25 and, and, and 15 and Aiton's going nuts either. I, I think it's because guys like Dwayne Washington out of nowhere are like, oh, okay, it's my time to shine. Damian Lee, where we saw those random pop-up games when everybody was out and just the supporting cast is enough. And because Atlanta is so freaking weird and there's no way we can try to predict how they're going to handle this situation. So 
Uh, yeah, but I think there are a lot of scenarios where Paul goes under the points and probably under the PRA too, which is good odds at FanDuel 30 and a half total there. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to be rebounding much against the right. Hawks team either. Right. The only reason to be scared of the points, rebounds, and assists is all of a sudden he's got 15 assists or something like that. <laughs> and then you're like, ah, oh, damn, that's a little bit scarier. But still, the points, I think he goes well enough under 18. That I don't even think he can really get to another prop combo uh, that involves the points. So that is all the time we have for you today. One of the more interesting four game slates because it's coming on trade deadline with some madness for sure. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Check out the other couple game videos we have up for you today. Also going to have that trade deadline uh, video and what that means in terms of the futures markets here in the NBA. So until we see you next, happy betting. Oh, 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 oh